Pliny is one of the leading voices in modern instrumental guitar music. His music is whimsical, uplifting, and beautifully arranged. Today I'm going to dive into the song I'll Tell You Someday from the 2020 album Impulse Voices. This song is a great example of how to tie an entire piece of music together with one idea. It begins with this guitar intro. This is an ostinato that will carry through the entire song. An ostinato is a continually repeated musical phrase or rhythm. This guitar part is the connective thread that holds the whole piece together, so let's take a closer look at it. The guitar part uses this rhythm exclusively, an eighth note, a sixteenth note, and then another eighth note, which totals five sixteenth notes. The tempo here is 140 BPM, so this part goes by pretty quickly. Most of the tune has a quarter note pulse once the band enters, so here's how this rhythm sounds against a quarter note click. Notice that this feels fairly awkward, as the rhythm lasts 5 16th notes against a quarter note, which lasts 4 16th notes. So we have a 5 against 4 polyrhythmic feel. This rhythm happens 24 times in the whole ostinato. 5 16th notes times 24 equals 120 16th notes. If you divide 120 by 4, you get 30, which is the amount of quarter notes this whole pattern lasts. To make this a little easier to digest, since 24 is a really large number to count to, I would group four of these rhythms together like this. This gives you a chunk that's five quarter notes long. This happens six times, which also equals 30. So now I'm viewing this as six patterns instead of 24. The first three of these six chunks all stay on one note, the note B. The last three have a simple melody that moves up within a scale, beginning on every other one of these five sixteenth note patterns. I'll talk about the harmonic concepts later on, but essentially this melody walks up what sounds like a major scale. This guitar ostinato plays through the whole song, as I mentioned before, and there are really two main sections to this tune. The beginning to a minute and 55 seconds, and then 208 to the end. Both of these sections treat this ostinato very differently. In the first half of the tune, this 30 quarter note long pattern is approached in groups of three quarter notes. The time signatures go as follows, 3-4, 6-4, 3-4, 6-4, 3-4, and this equals 30 quarter notes. Even after I deciphered this rhythm, I still had a hard time counting along in this first section. You don't get that quarter note pulse until about 40 seconds into the song, and even after it enters, the band isn't always accenting the downbeat of these patterns of 30. For instance, when the groove first kicks in, the band is hitting on the end of two, or three eighth notes after the downbeat. The one thing that helped me get my bearing here, and the reason I included these 3-4 bars, is this pattern of two dotted quarter notes that happen every time this 3-4 bar occurs. Focusing on these two dotted quarter notes helped me to count along when I was first listening to this. Keep in mind our 5 16th note long ostinato is still happening underneath all of this, which against these dotted quarter notes is 5 against 6. This in combination with the quarter note pulse gives you 4, 5, and 6 all working against each other, which is one of the reasons this is pretty hard to feel. The accents and the drums and guitar riffs often don't land on the downbeats of measures, which adds to the ambiguity. For instance at 104 the heavy guitars enter on the end of 2 instead of on the downbeat. A lot of the background figures and lead guitar parts in this first section are done with dotted quarter notes as well, adding to this 3 or 6 feel. In the second half of the tune, the rhythm is considerably easier to feel. The ostinato plays once between the first and second halves of the tune, and then it moves into rhythms based around 4 instead of 3 like we had in the first half. There are really two halves of this phrase here. The first is 3 bars of 4-4 four, four and a bar of 6-4, and the second is 3 bars of 4-4. Four, four. And this equals 30 quarter notes. What really 
really makes this section easier to feel is that we finally get a strong backbeat on beat three of these 4-4 four, four bars. <laughs> which automatically gives you a more straightforward groove. That, in combination with a much hookier melody, makes this whole section feel much more natural. The drums actually play the 5 16th note ostinato on the hi-hat against this backbeat, whereas the drums kind of ignored the ostinato in the first half of the tune. <laughs> There's also no groups of dotted quarter notes working against the rhythm here, just the ostinato against the 4-4 backbeat. These two sections contrast each other really well, while being based off the same underlying rhythm. I like how the groove is more obscured in the first half of the tune, and then gets more obvious in the second half. It's a really cool arrangement approach. The other main thing to talk about is the harmony. Now, I mentioned that the intro guitar used what sounds like a major scale, and that seems true until the rest of the band enters. The guitar is pedaling on the note B, but that's not the root note of the key. The root note is actually an A, which we hear in the rhythm guitar and bass. So this B note that's in the ostinato is actually the ninth of the key. And it's really cool to spend a lot of time on an extension like the ninth. And ninths are a really common sound in modern guitar music. Maybe overused in some cases, but I think it works really well here. If we look at the notes of our ostinato against the root note of A, what we have are the first six notes of the A Lydian mode. So it's a good bet we're in Lydian here. Lydian is one of Pliny's most commonly used sounds, so this isn't really that surprising. And Lydian is a go-to for this kind of music. In the clean guitar at 25 seconds, you have chords that all come from A Lydian. C sharp minor, E major, and A major, and then C sharp minor, E major, and B major. It goes back and forth between A major and B major a lot, and that's a super common sound in Lydian, the one major chord to the two major chord. We stay in Lydian for most of the first half of the song, except for a few quick moments. At 1 minute and 30 seconds, there's a B major 7 chord, which has an A sharp and gives a B major sound. Very uplifting. Pliny also introduces a C natural in a few spots, most notably at 1 minute and 42 seconds. This is the minor third in A, and it brings in a bit of a minor sound here. Some basic modal interchange like this can introduce different moods when desired. There's a lot of cool extended chords throughout this first section as well. In the second half of the tune, the root note moves from A to C sharp. This makes the guitar ostinato note of B the minor seventh in the key, once again really highlighting an extended sound. The main chord progression here is C sharp minor, E major, B major, and F sharp major. This is coming from the C sharp Dorian mode, another common sound in modern guitar music. It's a minor sound, but an uplifting minor sound, and it's perfect for Pliny's music. <laughs> He also plays an A major chord from time to time in this section, at 2 minutes and 42 seconds for example. C sharp Dorian has an A sharp in it, so this A major chord is actually coming from C sharp Aeolian or natural minor. And this calls back to the first half as well, which was rooted on that note of A. Once again, we're mostly staying within one mode in the second half of the tune here, really milking the sound and vibe of this mode. It's cool that both halves of the song are contrasting rhythmically like we talked about earlier, but also harmonically. It really makes this last part of the tune feel like everything is coming together. The rhythm and harmony are great here, but one of the most important elements of Pliny's music is his arrangement and instrumentation. Now I'm not going to go into great depth here, but all of his choices are very deliberate, from where the heavy guitars enter, to the synth sounds, to the clean guitar voicings, and the overall dynamics. There's a lot of great contrast between soft and loud here, and there's all kinds of tasty little background sounds that reveal themselves with every listen. 
So there's a look at some of Pliny's rhythmic and harmonic choices. Lots of things to dive into here, especially on the rhythmic side of things. Out of all the modern instrumental guitar players, Pliny is the one that really stands out to me, and it's a lot less about his playing and more about his compositional abilities. His music has depth that goes far beyond just being a great guitar player, which he is. As always, if you enjoyed this lesson, subscribe, hit the bell notification, like, comment, share. Till next time, stay proggy. Oh, <laughs>